we're deeply disappointed. Uh, their position is irresponsible and, frankly, dangerous. Uh, alongside other member, station, member states around the world, uh, we continue to call for China to provide the needed access to data and samples. And this is critical so we can understand to prevent the next pandemic. This is about saving lives in the future, uh, and it's not a time to be stonewalling. So will statements like that work? The White House putting China on blast for blocking phase two in the investigation of the origins of COVID. Think that'll change anything? Uh, Morgan Ortegas is the former State Department spokesperson. She worked for Mike Pompeo. Uh, Morgan, good morning to you. The, the word there from Jen Psaki was morning, irresponsible. Bill. You think? Uh, <laughs> it, it's beyond irresponsible. The White House is, is right in their condemnations, but I think it's going to take more because we started these same condemnations and the same call for transparency a year and a half ago. All the stuff that you're seeing in the news right now that's been reported, we knew all this stuff a year and a half ago. And in fact, as Mike Pompeo's spokesperson, we did an off-the-record briefing with major, major anchors around America, gave them this information. Everything that you're seeing reported now about the possibility of coming out of the lab, the only person who ran with it at the time was Brett Baer. And we had every major network represented on that call when we said, guys, look at this information. So that's why Mike Pompeo and I... Uh, started talking about this a year and a half ago in February of 2020 while in Munich Germany Mike Pompeo started warning the world uh, that we that China needed to be transparent needed to be open and those calls were largely ignored bill what what consequence has China suffered for the fact that they have lied to the world about the origins of COVID Germany is still pushing for trade deals Right. So is the rest of Europe. They haven't suffered uh, economically. They've suffered from a PR perspective. I think people know that they lied um, and that they continue to lie. But they're not really having any repercussions yeah, for well, unleashing I, I this think virus you, on the world. And you're exactly about it. right about that. What's the administration going to do about that, however? What would your former boss do? Yeah. What would the former President Trump do? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, we started, so first we started by calling this out and telling the world, hey, you, you guys need to pay attention to this. One of the things that we did, which was very controversial at the time, is we, as you remember, pulled funding from the WHO. Now, the lead up to that is Mike Pompeo and our team at the State Department had been telling the WHO for a long time, uh, listen, guys, you have to have a real investigation into the origins of COVID. We're not saying explicitly it's the lab, but just taking uh, China China's first excuse that it came from a bat, came from uh, from a wet market, was everyone just accepted this without any plausible evidence, without uh, any of the things that you need to find the origins uh, of COVID. And so we warned the WHO, we warned the WHO, we warned the WHO, and finally we pulled funding. And everybody uh, thought that this was, uh, you know, so controversial at the time. Now we're waking up. Two sham investigations later from the WHO, Tedros now has egg on his face and has to say, well, actually, the Chinese aren't uh, cooperating with us, like, sort of, you know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, Morgan, um, the Tokyo games are underway right now. Tokyo's 13 hours ahead of New York City. Mm -hmm. But in about 16 days, they're going to have a handoff ceremony in Tokyo for the Beijing Winter Games that are only seven months away. Uh, I was watching the feed earlier That's today. Right. Everyone in that stadium, all the athletes, are no, there are no spectators. They're all wearing a mask. And they're going to have a handoff ceremony that the world's going to watch while the Beijing participants will be wearing masks as well. Now, now how's the international community going to react when you could still have the possibility of going to Beijing, China next February with the pandemic still underway in parts of the world? What will they say? What will our, our nation's leaders yeah. do? How will they condemn the Chinese well, Communist Party? Uh, what, will they boycott the games? Th these are big questions that are not too far away, Morgan. Mm -hmm. No, and you're totally right, Bill, and we should be dealing with them now. Remember what happened in January of 2020. There were eight, at least eight Chinese doctors and, and scientists who were whistleblowers who just disappeared, right? China was digging mass graves, was preventing uh, travel out of Wuhan while lying to the WHO and telling them, no, we have no new cases. 
right? That was going on in January of 2020. So we still don't know the origins of this virus, and we may never know if China doesn't open up and if they don't suffer any repercussions for not allowing the transparency. But on the Beijing Olympics, as I talk about often uh, on this on this network, it's not just COVID that we have to look at, Bill. There is a genocide that both the Trump and the Biden administrations have concurred is happening in Xinjiang in China against Muslim Uyghurs, a genocide. Would we participate in a, in a genocide uh, in Olympics in any other country where a genocide is actively taking place? I don't think so. Great point. Why are we yeah, doing it in th China? These are massive questions, and we're going to get to them. They're not too far off, as I mentioned. In all likelihood, we will not be able to determine the origins of COVID before those games get underway. Right. Think about that. Morgan, thank you so much. Hope you have That's a terrific right. weekend. Thanks for coming back with us today.